Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to this week's episode of Tuesday Preppers, where we take a look at the in-game news, we see what's kind of coming our way, and we get ready for those trials and challenges um, by uh, looking for killers that are going to help us with the content that we have going on this week. And this week we actually have uh, a fair amount of content, um, but even though there's a fair amount of content, we only need two different types of killers, so we're going to talk about those here in just um, a moment. Um, let's take a look at the news, though. And if you look in the news, we can see we have at least four different events. And there's actually five. There's one nestled inside this one. So let's take a look at the um, the first one there, Big Bridge Showdown. Big Bridge Showdown is a raid against the Neo Garula beast enemy. Um, and you can take a look and see what that says here. Um, Neo Garula. And he's definitely a beast. You know, he's got uh, some tusks and a big old trunk and some fingernails and some hair. Um, and according to the wiki, he has no weaknesses or resistances, and you can only break his attack and magic. Um, and that's pretty typical of raids. Now, raids are also usually pretty easy, so I don't really worry too much about this. But, you know, Beast Killer is something you might want to get if you're having trouble damaging this enemy. Um, we do get some interesting equipment. We get the Gaia Gear Final Fantasy V. It's a Defense 24, Magic 43, and Spirit 57. It's clothes, or no, it's a robe, sorry. Um, and we also get the Ashura, a two-handed 160 attack katana. Now that is pretty low for today's standards, but if you're a beginner player just coming in because you like Final Fantasy V, this is a great pickup because it also gives you 10% chance of evading some physical attacks. Um, so that's kind of nice. Um, evasion on a two-handed weapon, you know, for a starter player, that's really, really good. Um, and if we scroll down, we can see all the bonus units and things as well. Now there's another one here, the, uh, the Big Bridge Exploration. Um, the final enemy in the Big Bridge is Gilgamesh, um, and he's a human, um, and he's resistant to fire, ice, water, thunder, wind, and earth at 35%, and he has no weaknesses. Um, so what that means is you either want to bring a non-elemental team, a dark team, or a light team to take him out. But again, you know, it's, a, it's an exploration event, and these have not been too challenging the last couple times we've had exploration, so I'm not too worried about it, but it is a human enemy, and lots of the other stuff we're dealing with this week is human as well. If we go back a page to uh, Seeker of the Void, um, that's the next one here. This is the unit upgrade event for Kelger. Um, and we can see kind of Kelger's stats here. He's a, an attack damage, uh, attack based unit. Um, for, uh, and he does super limit burst damage main, mainly. Um, and kind of got some interesting stuff going on. Now, his STMR is a 65 attack. Um, accessory that also gives 500 attack to himself um, and gives 50% physical and magic um, plant and human killer. So that's kind of a nice STMR. Um, are there better ones out there? Technically, but this is free, so don't skip it. Um, his TMR is kind of whatever. It's some armor that's basically only good for him, but does have 15% evasion on it. So between the evasion armor and the evasion katana, you could have 20% or 25% evasion, which is nothing to, um, to complain about. One thing that is kind of interesting is this Lupine Howl ability. It's one use every four turns, boosts physical and magic damage against humans, attack and LB damage for all allies, and boosts damage for LBs for the caster. So that sounds like an L or, um, a human killer buff for the party, which could be useful in, a, in several of the events this week, namely the, um, the one that we're talking about. Um, and then we get some bonus units as well. So don't forget to skip out. Um, don't, don't skip out on Kelger. You know, um, free stuff is free stuff. And um, he could be useful for this event and some other stuff we have going on this week. Now, X-Death is the final boss of this event. This is your, you're beating up X-Death. And he has water and ice resistance at 50%. No weaknesses. And you can break him with all stats. So definitely do that. And X-Death is, of course, a human enemy. Just like everything else this week. So that's kind of cool. Um, the next one that we have is Princess and the Poison Arrow. Princess and the Poison Arrow was a really cool scene in the game of Final Fantasy V, and this is the crown fight, the silver crown fight for Princess uh, Summoner Lena, rather. Um, and the enemies are Magisa and Forza, um, and they have um, ice, wind, and dark resistance at 50%. Um, they also have water resistance at 100% for Magisa and 50% for Forza. So you really don't want to deal with those elements if you can avoid it. Instead, use fire and thunder, which is their main weaknesses, at 20% de uh, decrease. And you can use all the breaks you want. Um, so I don't think this is going to be too hard. You know, at this point in the game, we have um, X-Death. So if you're not bringing, you know, Lena to her own event, you could just use X-Death and imbue him with fire or thunder. Um, and so that's pretty cool. It is exclusive to Final Fantasy V units. 
Um, so that could be a little difficult depending on how you want to imbue him with fire or thunder. Um, but we do have lots of options for that. So that's kind of neat. Um, don't forget that, that um, Ferris has um, crowns from the last event. And that gave a really nice thunder field for Ramu. Um, so that is uh, potentially useful there. Okay. Very cool. Lena's upgrades are here on the screen if we scroll down to ability upgrades. And we see that she gets um, upgraded um, her... Um, Princess of Tycoon goes from 500 up to 1500 magic and changes her LB effects. Um, and then she also gets Passionate Tap Dance, which is upgraded to plus two, which uh, increases her magic again and changes LB effects and does some other good things. Um, the LB change effect is for her um, her Phoenix Dive. It adds an area effect on the party side that it boosts, um, boosts fire damage. So you've got enemy um, debuff on one side for fire and then fire resistance buff and amplify on your side, which is kind of a nice combination if you upgrade that to plus two. And why wouldn't you? Because, um, yeah, it's free. Do, do free things, okay? Do free things. Don't trade those crowns. Do free things. The other um, thing we have is the 12 types takedown against the Iron Giant. Um, it is a human enemy as well, and he has resistance to everything at 200% and 95% non-elemental resistance. Um, you can use all the breaks you want, um, and from what I understand, he's just pretty much a, um, uh, a big bulky boy and just doesn't really do a whole lot of the physical attacks and one magic attack that you can seal um, every other turn. So evasion and mirage and sealing his magic, and you should be good to go because you've got 30 turns to do this. This is crazy. Um, 30 turns on the hardest difficulty, and you get an STMR Moogle for that. Pretty cool, 100% STMR Moogle. Don't skip it. Um, get Maneater Plus, get all the other stuff. You know, Maneater's not that uncommon at this point in the game, so it's there and we should get it. But, you know, it, it's, it's free stuff is free stuff. The uh, final thing I want to mention here is that they are doing um, a live stream event this weekend. Um, and because they're doing a live stream event, that means we're doing another beige carpet after party. Um, the live stream review follows immediately after that. And then we'll, um, you know, me and some, some guests will talk about the live stream and what came, what kind of came up and came out of it. Um, but that's only part of the fun. The other part of the fun is just hanging out with you guys in chat. So I will definitely be there. Don't forget if you want a fan festa to spam hashtag FFBE fan festa 2023 in the chat so that they know we care about this. Um, I'll be doing that constantly as much as I can uh, while also getting ready for the beige carpet after party. Um, and we're gonna have some new guests on this this month. So that's gonna be exciting. You know, one or two new guests I'm hoping. Um, and uh, you get to hear some new voices as well as some old favorites as well. But uh, definitely keep an eye out for that video. Should be coming out on Sunday night as soon as the live stream is over and we finish our recording. Okay, so with uh, with all that said, we've got beasts to deal with. We've got humans to deal with. Let's talk about how we can get some beast and human killer. Um, beast is um, it's prevalent, but not as prevalent as human. Um, we've got a lot of options. As far as trial rewards go, the Artemis bow is technically hum uh, beast killer plus on a bow beast killer plus materia from scorn of aemon which is really pretty easy to get i demonstrated that on stream tonight by killing it with 2b in one turn um true mirasame you can get not that great raflesia gives you beast eater sense which is good but raflesia is definitely one of the hardest trials we have um cerberus gives you beast killer plus and the recipe for it so you can make as make as many as you want and then stmrs you got val um, valued memories from Irvin, and then it's it's like neo visions duplicate from um from a2 um, and then also Infernal Battle Guard from If It Rain. There's a handful of others, but those are kind of the good ones. Beast Killer, though, not as important because it's a raid and raids are very, very easy. The bigger issue is Human Killer because we've got so much human to deal with this week. Um, you've got the Cross Igion Arm um, for a Trial Reward, which is a two-handed fist, which is kind of nice. Thorn Mace is a, uh, a mace, which is you know potentially good. Um, but as far as like really good ones go, you got Mask of Ashura. Um, the Maneater Sense from Scorn of Ymir, which we're going to do tonight, and Maneater Sense. You know, we've got Maneater Sense and Maneater Sense um, from Dark Dragon. So you're going to go after Scorn of Ymir or Dark Dragon. And both of those are really pretty easy. Um, Ymir is actually kind of more complicated, in my opinion, um, and, and a little more difficult <laughs> than Dark Dragon is. Uh, so that's kind of sad, considering how old that trial is. Um, but then as far as, like, STMRs go... Don't forget that Guy's Belt can be obtained with Star Quartz, basically. Um, and uh, Guy's a three-star unit, so very, very good, you know, human killer materia on, on Guy's Belt, or ability on Guy's Belt, which is an accessory. Don't forget Weapon Specialist Furion from, uh, you know, that's a very, very good one as well. 
Um, so there's a handful of things there you could do, and we're going to go after Scorn of Emir tonight um, with a pretty basic team. The the one exception to that is um, our main damage dealer, which we could maybe be a friend unit. Who knows? Um, but let's take a look. We're going to go after Scorn of Emir. Scorn of Emir is in the Vortex, um, and it's in the Nemesis Pain, and it's right here under Chamber of the Fallen in Chamber of the Indignant. And right here, Scorn of Emir. Now, our challenges are to do this in um, 10 turns or less with a party of five, no deaths, which is a little tricky, but we're, we've got ways of dealing with it with this party and just beating the quest gets you Man Eater Sense. So if all you care about is Man Eater Sense, just beat this thing and you're gonna be fine. Here you go. Um, it is an aquatic enemy and aquatic is kind of hard to gear for depending on what unit you're bringing. Um, we're bringing a unit that, that does gear for this very, very easily. And so I'll show you that in just a moment. Its weaknesses are fire damage. Um, and um, you can use spears on its shell to break it, um, which is kind of nice. And um, you can also do some mechanics to like avoid some of his attacks by jumping or escaping from battle temporarily. Um, we're not going to bother with that because we're going to be killing this thing really easily um, with this team. So we're going to we're going to go ahead and go into it, and we're going to uh, skip past all of our friends because we're just going to take no companion. We're going to pretend, you know, maybe. You've either got a really strong X-Death friend, or maybe a Roberta friend, or maybe a Mazurka friend. The gear on these three units does not matter at all, um, with the exception of, you know, um, you kind of want everyone to have a little bit of HP, so their gear doesn't really matter. So you could really make any of these units your friend, and it'd be fine. I'm not even going to worry about their gear, and as you can see, Roberta's not even wearing any. Bigs and Wedge, they are provoking for us, and they're dual wielding. They've got the Aurora Scarf. Um, they've got some thunder, lightning, and ice defense. Um, they got death immunity, um, and they've got some evasion. In fact, they've got full evasion. Um, the boss does give itself accuracy, so that doesn't matter a whole lot, but you know, anything's better than nothing. Um, and there you go. Um, they're not wearing a vision card. Now, the one unit whose gear does kind of matter for this, and I'll go ahead and pop up the gear camera so you can see it a little more clearly, um, is X-Death. So here's X Death, um, and he's he's kind of armed to the teeth, and he's got you know he's got magisters for chain cap up. He's got the good chain mail. He's got his MP as much that maxed out as we can. He's got the dark vision sword. He's got you know a bunch of MP, some some killer, and he's got dazzling demon. because he's a meteor user, you know why wouldn't you? But notice he's got 300% aquatic. That's where you want him to be, um, and he's uh, he's ready to go. So we're gonna we're gonna take this team just like that, and. Um, and uh, you know, take this boss out. So let's get into it. So um, it starts out the fight that you really, before you can damage the body at all, you need to break the shell and get rid of it. So we're gonna do that. Gilgamesh is going to, in the shift form, break the shell, and then he's going to um, just kind of use whatever secondary skill. I'm gonna use Genji Blade just for like an imperil to everything. And then he's gonna shift targets and hit the snail. Um, so you kind of want, you, you definitely want to like hit both of them. You won't do damage to the snail. You'll only do damage to the shell, but the break will land on the snail. So you do break, shift target. There we go. And notice the boss is broken now. So that's cool. All right. Mazurka is going to use her um, her Limit Burst for Lance Blast. It's just Mirage. If you don't have her at EX2 and you want to use Emotional Slash instead, you can. If you don't have Mazurka, you don't need to worry about it. Um, you could use Roberta's Mirage skill instead. The Mazurka does make this a little bit easier. Um, so we're just going to use Lance Blast. Cool. Um, Roberta and Ignitos are going to do their Aquatic Killer buff, Inferno Breath, and then Ignitos Domain. This is going to give Biggs and Wedge a big resistance buff to the three elements that the boss does, um, as well as a big HP barrier for five turns. Awesome. Biggs and Wedge are going to just use their defensive cooldown skills, so give me a bit more time. That's for um, aquatic mitigation, and then wish I could have done more just for boosting their spirit and um, taking less damage. And then X Death, he's going to just use triple, and he's going to power of the void, complete void, and then just cast Fire Regoth or something to do. Um, do a little bit of damage to the shell, 
Not that big a deal. Cool. All right, so some attacks are gonna come in. Fixed damage. Biggs and Wedge are covering the rest, and they had Mirage, so they didn't take too much damage. They're fine. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of this shell, shall we? Um, so to help us with that, um, we're going to have Roberta and Ignitos just triple cast their Mystic Breath, um, or actually double cast their Mystic Breath and then a Mega Breath, and we're going to hit Meteor here. Um, if I can find it, I had this problem earlier, it's at the top, not the bottom. And so we're going to send Meteor and then send the chain for Roberta. And she's going to chain it up a little bit, and then um, X-Death's going to cap. And this should kill the shell very, very quickly. There you go. Shell's gone. We didn't even bother with the break gauge. X-Death don't care. Um, now, we can use items in this clear. I don't know if you if you caught that. We can use items. So Mazurka's going to go ahead and um, Elixir on X-Death. Just to get him ready for turn four. Um, Biggs and Wedge are just going to guard. Um, they don't really have anything else they need to do right now. And um, Gilgamesh, uh, he can also guard. But if you really worry about it, you can go ahead and, and just break the boss and, um, you know, keep it fresh. There you go. Some more fixed damage, some magic attacks, tentacle pummels, lots of tentacle pummels. Biggs and Wedge don't care. Now, to help us do more damage on turn four, we are gonna use Excess SLB here, which is gonna do the Sword Imperil. That's very handy. Good deal. We're gonna guard Mazurka, Gilgamesh, and Biggs and Wedge. And Roberta Ignitos, uh, they're going to um, use Support from the Skies um, for Mirage Stacks. We're gonna use Draconic Triune. Um, and just because we're paranoid about it, we're gonna use Aquatic killer at one more time the boss has accuracy so that's why the mirage decks kind of help out a little bit tentacle sweeps death attack that bigs and wedge are immune to because of the safety bit very very useful and now we're uh, we're ready to go so we've got you know quad cast available for for roberta and ignitos we've got a meteor ready to go and uh, let's just take this thing out. Turn four, X-Death doing all the damage. That's all missions too. Just so you can see the breakdown, he does 10 billion damage uh, the way we got him geared up. Um, and there you go. And that was all missions on Scorn of Emir. That'll get you Maneater Sense so you can start gearing up for all the human stuff that you have going on this week. Um, hopefully that helps and you've got kind of a sense of what you need to get ready for this week and you're excited for... Um, all the new content coming out on Thursday. We'll be playing that live on Twitch at uh, 9 p.m. Central Time um, to kind of like have some fun with it. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, raids aren't too, too exciting, but we'll try and get through, you know, um, all the all the Final Fantasy V one-time stuff as well as um, the um, the Iron Giant. Maybe we'll have some fun with, with the Iron Giant as well. Um, and that's pretty much it for right now. Um, look forward to seeing you guys over on Twitch on Thursday as well as in the chat on Sunday during the live stream. Um, and then uh, hopefully you come back and check out the beige carpet after party video. Um, but until then, we'll see you later and take care of each other, be good to each other, and uh, good night.